Okay, so this is my setup. This is a FTDI uh, mini module, and they have the SWD register hack. It acts as a SWD uh, adapter and connect it to the controller board via the uh, in-circuit programming port. Alright, so let's go to the computer and try to dump the firmware. Here I'm just using open OCD to connect to the chip with the mini module and the SWD register head. And the target is stm 32 f one chip. So we just turn that to the uh, open OCD shell then uh, reset hop. You can see here is the chip return a PC of zero. So let's try to read out the option byte to see if the chip have uh, read out protection enable. What read out protection is is they is the prevent us to read out the firmware. And so the command is st under to f one x uh, option read. Uh, we can see here that it's actually read out protection is uh, uh, protection is on, so we cannot uh, uh, read out the firmware well uh, directly. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna try to read it out anyway, and it's probably gonna error. Yep, uh, let me see here. It's a fail to read memory, so we have to find a a uh, different method to bypass this uh, readout protection. One of the methods I find is this exceptional failure paper. Here what they did is uh, abusing the reset vector, then uh, it really caused a exception to happen, then uh, monitor the value in the PC, then you can recover the data in the flash. But uh, I try on this GD32 uh, F1 chip, is uh, always return a PC of value, so it's something different between this uh, GD32 and the real F132 chip. So here you can see that the PC returned by the chip is uh, always zero, so we cannot uh, use this uh, method to recover data in flash. Another method I find to bypass readout protection is this paper. Here what they did is they do a boot glitch on the bootloader to bypass the readout protection check. Here they use a chip whisper with a sdm 32 f 103 target. Uh, this is the setup on the... So this is the glitch signal from the MOSFET. Then they remove all the decoupling cap. Then they put a 10 ohm load limiting resistor. And, uh, then they set up a boot number zero and boot one to bootloader mode. Down here is the uh, flow diagram of the bootloader. So what it does is check if it uh, RDP active. If it's yes, then here we go to the uh, send a NAC byte. If it's not active, then it allows you to uh, read out the uh, uh, firmware. So here is the disassembly of the code. Uh, you can see there is the check for the RDP active. And that's, this is the RDP check. So here is the waveform of the uh, serial line. So right after the send in command, they send a sort glitch signal to the MOSFET. What the MOSFET does is basically short VCC to ground and cause a glitch in the chip and it skip the RDP check. Then you can check the uh, receive uh, data if it a uh, act by or a NAC by. If it act by then we successfully glitch the chip. Um, so I don't have a chip whisper with me so I'm gonna try to do a similar thing with a uh, Tinzi 3. Uh, I think it's fast enough to uh, carry out this attack. This is my setup to glitch the bootloader. Here is my power supply. It's a supply 3.3 volt for the controller board. It's connected to this 2 10 ohm resistor in parallel, so we have a resistance of 5 ohm. Then here we, that right here is the boot zero pin. We can pull that high to 3.3 and 
and the boot one uh, is connected directly to the pin of my controller here and can is pulled down to ground and this one is the, the MOSFET that uh, connect to the the uh, RAIN is connected to VCC of the microcontroller and the RAIN is connected to ground and the gate is uh, driven by the TINZ over here and this one is the variable resistor to control the gate voltage of this MOSFET and so this is used to like control how much the how much this MOSFET pull the VCC to ground and uh, here is the serial signal to communicate with the bootloader and uh, I find that it's not just necessary to remove the decoupling cap because uh, even with them in place I was able to uh, reliably uh, glitch the uh, bypass the RDP uh, check and this is the, the TINZ uh, microcontroller that I used uh, for this uh, VCC glitch attack alright uh, let me show you the code on the computer This is my code for the uh, glitch attacks. I quickly hacked it up in Arduino and it's uh, pretty hacky at the moment but uh, it works so let me show you what it does. Right, uh, so the first thing that it does is get the read address uh, from the host and then we uh, do the chip reset and send it a get command just to test to see if it uh, communication with the chip working. It's not necessary for the uh, attack to work, so we, yeah. And uh, this is the main loop that do the uh, uh, attack. So here we send it the read command, then we send it the glitch post, and uh, we check if the attack is successful. Then we print out the hex dump of the data returned by the bootloader. Uh, and if the chip locked up, then we break out the loop and do the chip reset. So that's basically it. That's all it does here. Let's go into the read memory glitch function and see what it does inside. And this is the main part of the uh, glitch. So in here, we can see that the first thing what we do is, is uh, disable interrupt because this is a time and critical section. We don't want uh, anything to interrupt while we uh, send out the glitch port that could affect uh, our timing. So we disable interrupt, then send it the read command. Then we wait for we wait the boot uh, wait for the bootloader to do the RDP check. At that time, we toggle the uh, MOSFET to send a glitch signal. So we toggle the pin and wait for a certain amount. Then we toggle it again. Uh, so we set, and here is clear the GPIO pin. And uh, then we re-enable interrupt uh, again because we we out of the uh, time and critical section. Now we just uh, check the uh, we check see if it return a NAC or an act. If it uh, uh, send us back a NAC, then uh, uh, that means that the attack is fail and the RDP uh, check is uh, we didn't uh, we wasn't able to bypass the RDP checks. So. <coughs> And if it return act, then that means we successfully bypass the RDB check. Uh, so here we print out a successful glitch uh, message. And uh, this in else case it for a uh, when we return a unknown value. That means maybe the chip is locked up or something funky happened inside the uh, bootloader. So if it's successful, then we continue sending it the address package, then the length package. Then we read the data back, uh, read the return data for, uh, uh, from the bootloader. So that's it. Pretty, that's, uh, that's all I need to carry out this uh, attack. It's pretty simple. Alright, uh, let me run this attack and we'll show you that it worked. So I was able to uh, successfully dump the entire firmware image from the controller board 
and uh, then I try to flash this to another uh, laser projector that I have but the, the uh, when I put it up it doesn't work uh, so I debug it with OpenOCD and find out that the firmware image always try to erase itself and brick, the, brick itself uh, so I load that the load the firmware image into Gitra and turn out there is uh, I find this uh, uh, anti clone check in here. What it does is uh, do some calculation based on the device ID. Uh, now, the, so in, inside the SDM32 microcontroller, there's a unique device ID field that store the uh, X Y coordinate of the wafer, the lot number and the wafer number. And that information is stored at uh, this uh, uh, one fffff uh, seven e eight uh, address, for, and we are the F one chip. So here we can see that it's actually read that value and does some calculation on it. But the if uh, but there's another mode that uh, if it find this uh, there's a magic string. And if that uh, magic ring found at this uh, location, zero eight zero three uh, e eight zero zero, then it enter a uh, a binding mode. So inside this binding mode is that uh, it it uh, do a calculation based on uh, the chip ID, the device ID, then write that value to flash. So then um, next time um, it put up, it will uh, see that that the magic ring is not no longer no, no longer there. Then let's go to this flow, uh, do that same calculation again, and calculate if it uh, the the value match. If it not match, then it uh, you can see here that it uh, do a if it not match, then it will erase the flash at this address. Uh, so that explain why my thumb didn't work. Then uh, <coughs> after I try to after I write that magic uh, value to that location. Uh, then uh, the device uh, functional uh, able to function like it used to. Uh, let me show you the magic string. Uh, this is the magic string that check is something that in Chinese um, I don't know what to say, but uh, if you put it uh, this value this uh, string into uh, at this location uh, zero eight zero three e eight zero zero. Then it's automatic uh, bind itself to the uh, write the uh, device D to flash and uh, bind itself again and able to function like normal. All right, uh, that's it. I right, see you guys in part three where we uh, modify the firmware to able to trim uh, to trim with open lace uh, to USB. All right, see you.